I got a great question today from somebody wanting to know how does digestion change after the gallbladder has been removed. So if you've had your gallbladder removed, in this video I'm going to help you understand some of the differences that can go on in your digestive system, whether you're experiencing symptoms or not, because some people will have a lot of symptoms and some people won't experience any changes at all. But we'll help you understand what could be going on and also some steps you could take to optimize your situation. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So a lot of people are just kind of told that, well, gallbladder doesn't really do anything anyway, so I might as well just yank it out. But but it, it it's in there. Why? Why, why would they put it in there if it doesn't really do anything? So I'm not a doctor. If you're thinking about having your gallbladder removed, I'm not telling you not to have your gallbladder removed. There can be some significant problems with gallbladders where there just might not be an option but to have it removed. But if you still have your gallbladder and maybe there's some problems but they're not severe, we'll put a link in the description below this video for our how to save a gallbladder and you can go through those steps to see if any of those will be beneficial for you. But in this video, if you've had your gallbladder removed, I just want to help you understand how digestion can change and what things may be going the wrong way and what may be still going just fine and steps you can take to really improve everything that's going on. So to understand how this can change once this gallbladder is removed, we need to understand how the digestive process works in the first place. So basically when we eat food here, our stomach makes hydrochloric acid or, or HCL. And this HCL is meant to help us acidify that food so that we can break it down and get all the nutrients out of that food. That's the reason that we eat food is to get those nutrients out of the food. And then once that food is acidified properly in the stomach, it'll leave the stomach and go down here into what's called the duodenum or like the first 10 inches of the small intestine. And once this acidic product hits this duodenum, it'll trigger the gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile down to help neutralize the acids that left the stomach. So that's really what the gallbladder's job is. It may not be the hero, but it's sort of like the facilitator of the hero. So the gallbladder stores this bile, and bile is this soapy substance that's made by the liver. And then the liver sends it down here into the gallbladder. And then the gallbladder's job is to store and concentrate that bile. It concentrates it so that a small amount can be more effective and help us do all the things it's supposed to do when we're digesting our food. Now, once this food here, this acidic product, meets with this alkaline bile to neutralize those acids, then the pancreas here will also squirt like some bicarb out, which is alkaline. That also helps us neutralize acids a little bit. It'll squirt some enzymes out to help us digest those foods and break them down a little bit further. So all of these things, the bile, the bicarb, and the enzymes are really a lot of the key factors when it comes to really breaking down your food. Now, there are other things further down the line that, that are important that take place in the small intestine and even in our large intestine. And there's bacteria that are beneficial in the large intestine that help us really get more nutrients out of some of our foods and help us make B vitamins. And a lot of things go on beyond what I'm going to talk about here. But here I really want to focus on these main functions of the initial part of the digestive process because that's kind of where the gallbladder is really involved. So when we're going to look at the digestive changes, we want to look at symptoms that could possibly come up after the gallbladder is removed. But we also want to understand about some malfunctions that could be taking place and an inability to actually maximize the, our ability to get all the nutrients out of the food. And a lot of people that have their gallbladder removed will never experience any symptoms. Everything will just go just kind of fine. And they remove that pain of the gallbladder attacks, so it was like the best thing they ever did. But there's also a very large subset of people that have their gallbladder removed that will experience significant symptoms. And when you go down in the comments, unless this video just came out, you're going to see a lot of people talking about the symptoms and the issues that they're having, and you'll be able to understand what can go on a little bit. But let's look at the function of this bile, because this is really the big difference between having the gallbladder there and having it gone. When it's gone, there's no storage for this bile. So that's when that can create some problems. Because when this acidic product leaves the stomach, 
The stomach lining is meant to withstand those acids. It's okay for those acids to be in there because the stomach is built for that. But once it comes down here, those acids need to be neutralized or it can create some trouble. Remember, this HCL in the stomach is meant to help us break down protein. Well, guess what your intestinal tract is made of? Yeah, yeah, it's protein. So if these acids don't get neutralized by alkaline bile coming down and the bicarb coming out to neutralize those, then they continue to move through the intestinal tract into the small intestine, still in that acidic state. Well, they have the ability to basically digest a hole in your intestinal tract. And the body doesn't want that to happen, so it'll bring all the water it can to cool it down, and then it'll rush it through the body as fast as it can, and then it comes shooting out the back door and it lifts us off the toilet like a rocket. And that's why chronic diarrhea issues are probably the most common symptom that you're gonna see from someone who has lost their gallbladder. Because there's no bolus of bile here to come down and help neutralize those acids, those acids don't get neutralized and it can create that loose stool problem. Our stool basically moves through the intestinal tract at a pace according to its acidity level. So if the stool is a little bit too acidic, it's gonna to move too fast, and if it's too alkaline, it can really slow it down. Now, even without enough bile here, this bicarb should be able to help neutralize the acids at least a little bit, and for some people it may, but a lot of people feel like this pancreas is kind of triggered by these other events up here. Like this acid is triggering the gallbladder to squirt the bile down, and then is that triggering these other things to happen? Is it just the acid that's triggering these things? A lot of people have varying opinions on that, but when one system is not working correctly, it seems to have the ability to kind of throw some haywire into everything else. But the other factor of this bile hitting this acid is that it's these opposite pHs colliding of this acid from the stomach and the alkaline bile. When they collide, those opposite pHs hitting creates like this sizzle that really helps us bust the food apart and get all of those nutrients out of the food. So we not only need to neutralize the acids, we need this alkaline bile to help us access all the nutrients that are in the foods that we're eating. The other thing this bile does is it helps us emulsify our dietary fats or break them down so that the body can use them. And we need to be able to emulsify those dietary fats for the body to be able to access fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. Those are kind of a big deal. So we see a lot of nutrient deficiencies that can come about when either of these sides of digestion are not working correctly. And someone may still have their gallbladder, but if bile has become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, then they don't really have this bile flow either, and they can see a lot of these similar symptoms that can come about from a lack of gallbladder just because the gallbladder is not working correctly. So they, they may have stones in there, but maybe they haven't had that gallbladder attack that sends them to the hospital where they get it removed. But if it's not functioning correctly, a lot of these malfunctions can still be going on. So we wanna be able to access fat-soluble vitamins. And the other thing this bile does is it's the main detox pathway for the whole body. So the liver filters this junk out of the body. And then what a lot of people don't know is that the liver puts a lot of that junk into the bile so that when the bile travels through the intestinal tract, it carries those toxins through the intestinal tract so the toxins can go out the back door when we poop like a champion. So when bile is not flowing correctly, that removes that detox pathway. So what we wanna look at is why doesn't everybody have these symptoms after they have their gallbladder removed? Well, when the gallbladder is removed, the liver still makes the bile, it still puts all the toxins in the bile, and then the bile comes down this biliary pathway into the small intestine. So it doesn't go into the gallbladder anymore, it doesn't get stored so we don't have that bolus that comes down to really help neutralize those acids and, and bust the food apart so we can digest everything correctly. But if it's still flowing down here, it just kind of drips down there kind of in this constant mode all the time instead of just coming down when food leaves the stomach. So if enough of that bile is traveling down there, then it may be able to meet with the acid products that are coming from the stomach and they may be able to still digest their foods correctly, emulsify those fats, access fat soluble vitamins, everything may work okay. So some people who have lost their gallbladder won't experience any symptoms because this is all working okay. And keep in mind that it's also very common 
for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. So if this food is not really being acidified properly and it's not totally in that acidic state, when it leaves the stomach, it doesn't need a whole lot of help to help neutralize it. It's already not very acidic. So then the stool will move through at an appropriate pace and they won't have those chronic diarrhea issues that are so common. What we see with a lot of people who've lost their gallbladder and have an inability to detox here is that sometimes when the gallbladder gets so backed up, because remember its job is to concentrate that bile and there's a lot of things in our life now that have the ability to thicken up that bile so it doesn't flow as well. And if it's not flowing down here, then the gallbladder is just going to continue to concentrate it. That's its job. And the longer it concentrates it, the more it turns into sludge and eventually even into stones. So if that's really getting backed up here, it also has the ability to back up even further up the line. So if someone's really in a bad place, they need to have their gallbladder removed, that may have been taken out and removed that problem, but if they didn't clear this pathway, it still may not be flowing correctly. So then the person really isn't detoxing very well at all. So we like to see people take steps to thin out that bile so even if the gallbladder is gone, that biliary pathway is moving and they can put these toxins down here, send bile down to help digest all of our foods correctly and then let the body detox the way that it wants to. So we'll put a link in the description below for our video on five steps to improve bile flow. So if you feel like that might be a problem for you, maybe your stool is really light in color all the time or you're having other signs of not digesting your fats correctly, then if you can take steps to thin out that bile so that it flows, you may see some improvement to your situation. But if you are dealing with some issues, know that there's steps that you can take to improve your situation. So the most popular step is to supplement with ox bile or purified bile salts. And basically this is just like a supplemental form of bile. And a person will just take the bile here and let it come through the stomach and into the intestinal tract where it can do a lot of those jobs that that bile was supposed to do. So this can be very beneficial and really improve a person's ability to break down their food, access fat soluble vitamins, and all those good things that we want to get out of the food that we're eating. But the thing is, is that you really need to make sure that you're supplementing with ox bile the right way. Most people do it the wrong way. Most people take it with their food. And just remember that this bile is alkaline. So if you're taking bile with your food, while your food is supposed to be acidified and so that the body can break it down, you're neutralizing those acids and removing your ability to actually break your food down correctly. So we like to see people take ox bile away from their food so it can move through the stomach while the stomach is not in that acidic state and so that it's not turning off the stomach acid when the stomach acid is needing to be used to break down that food. So we'll put a link in the description below for our video on how to adjust ox bile dose and timing because there really is no one size fits all for that. It's really going to vary from person to person. There, some people are going to have to take it closer to their food. Some people are going to have to take it further away. The dose that you may use is really going to vary. So that video will kind of walk you through that and help you understand the steps to figure out what's going to be best for you. Another step that can be beneficial is to supplement with some digestive enzymes. You know, if you don't have the ability to really create this sizzle of the acidic product leaving the stomach, meeting with that alkaline bile to create that sizzle and really bust everything apart, then increasing the amount of enzymes that are available can help your body break down those foods a little bit better. And especially lipase, the enzymes that we use to break down dietary fats, I found that a lot of people that have lost their gallbladder, if they increase that lipase intake, that they have the ability to get a little bit more out of the dietary fats that they're bringing in. And another change that can come about is that keep in mind that to make this hydrochloric acid, the body really needs resources. It needs minerals and other nutrients to make that hydrochloric acid. And when this bile is not available, if we can't create that sizzle where we can really bust the food apart and digest it correctly, then fewer minerals become available to the body. And as resources go low, the body might not have enough resources to produce that hydrochloric acid. And then eventually a person's stomach acid may go low as well. Some people end up with this gallbladder being removed because stomach acid went low in the first place. And there's a lot of reasons that stomach acid levels can go low or a person might not be producing enough stomach acid. But when that happens, then this food isn't acidified and then this acidic food is not coming into the duodenum and triggering the gallbladder to squirt the bile down. 
So if this gallbladder is not being called on, it's like, hey, nobody told me to do my job. I didn't see anything acidic going in there. So I just sat here and I just kept concentrating this bile until it concentrates into sludge and eventually into stones. So this low stomach acid can be a problem either before the gallbladder was removed or if it reduces the ability to access the minerals in our food, it can happen later further down the line. And the third step that we'll talk about here is just that thinning the bile, like we talked about, taking steps to thin that bile out to make sure that bile can flow through here and the body can detox correctly, but also just to make sure that there's at least some bile available when this food is moving through just to help emulsify those dietary fats and to help you know, neutralize some of those acids and just slow the stool down so that it's not moving too quickly. So that can be really beneficial. If you wanna dig into this a little bit more, I'll put some links in the description below for some studies and some papers that help you understand how all these functions work and ways that you can really optimize them. So once you understand how digestion is supposed to work and the things that can change after the gallbladder is removed, then it's just a matter of taking the right steps to really optimize things for your situation and you can get everything working as well as you can. And if you want to understand some more steps, you can jump over right now and check out our video for six steps if you've lost your gallbladder to gain even more insights. I can't wait to hear about your results.